What is up, my fellow guardians? It is I, Josh757, <laughs> bringing you the Destiny 2 beta review. I'm going to kind of review everything I experienced in the beta. I only experienced um, the beta from a Titan's uh, perspective. I have not built a Warlock or a Hunter uh, character yet, so that is something to bear in mind as I go over these um, point of views. So I can see from a uh, just a purely tightened perspective instead of um, actually knowing what the classes are like and how they handle. This is somebody's outlook on different subclasses point of views like from an external point of reference instead of actually using it so I can give my feedback in that way and so on and so forth and see how everything feels. With that said, uh, do bear in mind guys that this is just a beta and nothing here really can reflect upon the full game and <coughs> full uh, release of Destiny 2. Although, being that said, we can suggest improvements from what we've experienced in the beta. I'm pretty sure the devs, if they ever see this or anybody else's reviews and all that stuff, they can take into consideration what we've um, said about the beta and how it feels and like go against take that and go against the uh, full game and see if any changes need to be made so let's get into this uh, first of all I'm going to start off uh, with the playlists for PvP Crucible and I've actually got like a, a butt ton of notes right in front of me to read off of this is gonna, just going to be like a, a casual review so you know to try and spark a discussion if I've missed anything uh, let me know in the comments <coughs> and uh, give me your feedback as well if you disagree with my points tell me what you disagree on and let's have a chat I'd love to have a chat with you guys about the beta and all that stuff and uh, you know maybe we'll come to some um, interesting conclusions but let's get into this what playlists would I like to see well so far I've played the control mode and the competitive oh, I forgot the name of it it's the it's the one where you plant the charge it's kind of like search and destroy mode uh, two great modes I love them uh, I really enjoyed the uh, plant in the charge mode more as there uh, more of an objective to it right oh, pardon me what the modes what I like to see uh, because I was a big uh, I wasn't a big but I mainly did rumble because I didn't have a team way back at the start of Destiny. So I would like to see like a Rumble playlist just for the other solo players out there. Make it more solo friendly So you, since you don't need a group to go into uh, Rumble just to dick about and have fun and stuff. And that would give us the opportunity to test out some guns and damage number values and all that stuff. Which I'll come to later. Aside from that there's been a new survival um, game mode that's been announced uh, by the IGN first fire team chat uh, thing on YouTube just type in the um, survival game plan pretty sure you can find it on YouTube which looks pretty cool it's basically where you uh, it's like a team deathmatch but with limited lives the way I've described it to people is a bit like a mini ticket system what Battlefield had if you run out of lives or tickets and the last person dies you lose the round and then it's best of how many ever rounds Sounds pretty cool. I don't really know what to suggest here. I, I, I was pretty happy with what I got, so I remain. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'm not expecting anything more. And whatever I, whatever we do get, I'll be happy for it. Uh, I'm actually quite excited to see what what they plan to do with PvP, which um, brings me to my next question: How was PvP for me? Um, I really liked the pace of PvP. And we're going to get into like a really nitty gritty discussion here, guys. PvP pace was slow as an individual, like from an ind individual uh, point of reference. So, you know, Destiny 2 doesn't give you the ability to take on the entire enemy team like you could in Destiny 1, right? Since you got your primary was so strong in Destiny 1, you had grenades that regen every 10 seconds or whatnot in Destiny 1. So you had lots of arsenal to play with against, uh, you know, 2v1s, 3v1s, 4v1s and the like. In Destiny 2, your skill as a or an individual is not as high 
I guess like the cap isn't as high or what you can do is as high as the um as Destiny one, so it's way more harder to pull off a two v one, a three v one, a four v one because of the pace of the game, the time to kill, the weapons available. I'm pretty sure there's going to be more weapons, and a meta is going to eventually rise up, um, which I'll get back into into the beta meta, and uh, yeah. Although I did like the pace of it, it was slow. But it was also more team based and uh, at points tactical with your abilities, the healing rift, the titan shield, and the uh, <laughs> the dodge on the hunter, which I'll also address um, soon. Let's see what else did what else did I want to cover real quick? Yes, also a little uh, note I'd like to put in is before we all cry nerfs and buffs. Since Destiny is a heavily team-based game now, we got to be careful as a community what we cry for buffs and nerfs. Because you can't just go willy-nilly buffing pulse rifles for solo play. Like, yeah, great, pulse rifles allow you to 2v1 people now, brilliant. But what happens if you just get in a team of pulse rifles and everyone's team shotting you? Team shotting is really strong as it is. And within, it, within its own right, rightfully so. But I think when we talk about nerfs and all that stuff, we've got to stand back and kind of uh, see what would happen from a team-based point of view. Because then uh, it'll be just shit for solo players, really. Because I've played a shit ton of solo in the Destiny beta, if you've watched my streams, and uh, it is quite frustrating when you come up against like a group of three, and they're actually working together. You can work with blueberries, but we all know how blueberries are, and how, uh, uh, to put it lightly, how blank they can be <laughs> when when you're playing with them in a uh, objective-based uh, game mode. We'll come back to that later. But yeah, that, that, that's a big thing I'd, I'd like to put in, is to let's be careful about um, uh, talking about buffs and nerfs um, across the board, team play, solo play, a lot of type of stuff. I just thought I'd put that in there. Tell me what you think of that. Um, I apologise. This is like a bit unorganised. I'm just going through my thoughts. I got, I got them down on my note, my notepad here, real quick, and just want to hear your guys's opinion on it. Okay. How's the uh, PVE? This is like overall, I'll, I'll get into some more details in a minute. PVE, for me, uh, was really cool. I'm pretty sure you guys are watching the Strike gameplay that I've got on here. Um, it took me, let me just say this, it took me so long to get this Strike gameplay <laughs> perfect, all nice and clean and stuff, because they're, they're like, there would be times where I just die or fall off the map and stuff, and I, I'm like, I can't have that in my review. I can't have that in my review. <laughs> I, I just thought that was something to mention. Like, this actually took me a while to get this. This just one. It's not a perfect strike because a, a teammate left, but Tom joined in later. But you know, what? Whatever, whatever. It's not part of the review. I just thought, thought I'd say it. PVE. Uh, it was really cool. I found myself going back to the strike, replaying it a couple of times in a row, and I didn't mind. It was fun. It, it didn't feel like grindy. It, it, it legitimately felt fun. Like I, I could actually replay this and not get tired of it. Like don't, I can't, I couldn't exhaust myself out of it by playing it over and over again. I really did enjoy switching from uh, from the strike to PvP, back to the strike to the PvP, back to the strike. I, I don't know if that's just because how it was laid out, the pace of the strike. Um, the boss did seem a bit, you know, bullet spongy, but that's not a bad thing. I'd rather put in the time and the effort to take a boss down and to get my nice reward afterwards. Obviously, you don't want to go full out, you know, the division bullet sponges. You know, you want that balance of effort versus reward and all that stuff like that. And it felt really satisfying. Even if it's the 10th gun I've got, like, that does not compute, it, it was still cool. Um, how the floor just disappears, the area felt huge. You know, the, the enemies were different, they have different abilities, the shen I think it's the Centurion is what their name is, they're really big, heavy uh, Cabal units. They have like these rockets that you saw earlier, me putting my shield up, like, 
really tough to take down compared to other units. You got these melee dudes, berserkers, or something like that that are really you know tanking and all that stuff. I like this variation in PVE instead of reskinned ass enemies. You got some new enemies in here. I noticed some storm minotaurs and all that stuff on my exploration. I saw what a server that looks like. Everything looks clean. I'm very happy with the PVE. Your, your supers, if you can regenerate orbs uh, for each other, you get your supers like non-stop. It, it's pretty fun. It's pretty fun. I wouldn't mind, um, which was a point made in my stream earlier, uh, just a quicker grenade cooldown uh, in PVE, but not for PVP. I, I, I like where the grenades are in PVP. Situational. Uh, grenades. I I, uh, I do find it interesting how the AOE and object, what I like to call objective-based grenades, are have been used more than you know your typical lightning nades and whatnot. But we can get into that later. But yeah, overall PVE, love it. The strike, love it. The first mission, love it. it looks clean, looks crisp. You know the enemies aren't easily melted. But um, hopefully that remains the case. Hopefully it remains a challenge. I do not want to be just going through, you know, wave after wave of enemies, or, or, or to the point where the raid just becomes like a strike. <laughs> That's what happened to me in Destiny One. Like, oh yeah, now, now I've done Oryx for the billionth time. This is this just feels like a strike. Like this bit in the um, strike that you're now watching was. For the, for the first couple of times, I was like, oh, what's going on? Loads of crazy shits going down. Uh, work as a team, do, 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 supers. You know, just lots of opportunities to have fun as well. Like, because your super doesn't regenerate every 10, you know, seconds. Use your super sparingly and wisely and have fun with it. It's pretty cool. Um, again, I only played as the Titan. Um, I'll be giving my views on... Uh, like an outside point of view on the other classes. If you've played as a hunter or warlock, then please let me know how you felt, how balanced um, it, it was for you down in the comments below. Yeah, overall PVE, like it so far. Okay, let's see what we had here. Talk about the classes in this order. Warlocks, Dawnblade, and Nova. War Warlocks, Dawnblade seemed, uh, it seems really cool. Um, from what I've heard from my friends and stuff like that, the where you throw the blade, like the fire thing, I like how it has like a travel distance, like a travel time, like projectile velocity. So, you know, if you fire a bullet, the bullet has to travel. So if you throw a flame sword, the flame sword has to travel. You can dodge it and all that stuff. They got like that air dodge as well. It was really uh, interesting to see people use that, um, which I found really interesting. Their air time was actually really surprising because um, I found myself not too often, but if they jump up, I'd expect them to fall down in Destiny 1, but they can have so much air time, you can actually quite easily stay in the air with a sniper rifle and snipe somebody. It's like, you can stay up in the air like that. Oh man, and that's, um, that was really cool. It was really cool to see some players pull that off, and I was like, oh, hmm. I just gotta keep my eyes on the skies when they jump up from now on. Um, I'll be getting to the radar too, so don't don't you worry about that, guys. Um, solo grenades, I feel like their grenades is alright. Um, seen a variation of solar to firebolt grenades. I, I, I think, did they have stickies? I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure because I only played as a titan. But yeah, I mainly saw firebolts and solars. Nice variation, nice usage of, you know, grenades being used. And please, for the, for the love of God, Bungie. I hope they hear this, or someone makes a point out of this. Please try not to make nerfs or changes just based off of weapon grenade usage. Like, oh man, just because people are using, like, say for example, more hand cannons, does it mean the hand cannons have to be nerfed? Why don't you bring other stuff up to that hand cannon level? Ex ex explore why people are using it. Do you know what I mean? Instead of, instead of what it felt like to me in Destiny 1, just blindly nerfing, hashing and slashing away at guns for almost no reason. That's what it just felt like to me personally. I don't know if anyone, anyone else feels the same. Please let me know. Uh, that's what I put that in there. Uh, the Nova Bomb. The Nova Bomb is hilarious. I don't know if any of you guys have seen my beta montage, in brackets, montage compilation video 
uh, jizzle through a Nova Bomb from the top of this strike, basically, down to the bars. <laughs> well, basically, from the first uh, floor that you disappear, disappear from. And it didn't even make it halfway. It travels so slow, but it's a super that I feel like you have to use tactically, in a sense. Like, you just can't throw it and just expect it to go vroom right into somebody. It's more of an objective-based super, it feels like to me. Give me your opinions on it. If you want it to go a bit faster, why not, why not? Uh, saw a bunch of Axiom Bolts being used and uh, scatter grenades. I, I don't know, I can't remember the third one. Cannot remember the third one. Maybe the Void Grenade? Not too sure. S just saw a mixture of the grenades being used. Okay, now we're moving on to Hunters and Arc Strider Golden Gun. We'll start off with Arc Strider. Arc Strider. A very interesting super um, doesn't seem to close the gap that much because you can outrun most roamings. You can outrun most roaming supers, which isn't the most fun thing. If I pop a sentinel shield, oh okay, you're running away, but at least the sentinel can kind of catch ground, and he has the shield from. Um, not so much with the arc strider. I've, I've pretty much outran every arc strider I've come across. Um, I, there hasn't been a time that I can remember off the top of my head right now where it's just up and at me, caught me in my back. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, there's the uh, there's the uh, view on the arc strider. Skip grenade still follow you around the map forever. Arc bolt I think was being used. I think it was arc bolt. Yeah, arc bolt. And I uh, don't know the other grenade. It's just one grenade I always forgot from each subclass. The ability on the hunters. Um, little dodge thing. I do see where people are coming from. It's not as an, it's not as much as a uh, team-based ability. I feel like it's more for maneuverability, taking quick cover, being a you know a flank gank and then go back type of character. I don't know how you'd increase it. Maybe reduce the cooldown, give you two dashes and and whatnot. Um, but yeah, give me your feedback on that, hunters. Also, I'd like to say, uh, give my opinion while I'm. Going over the subclasses just before I forget, the most overpowered, in my opinion, ability is definitely the healing rift from the warlocks. It, it, let's be honest, it's the most crutch. Because you could win any 1v1 just by sitting in the healing rift. Let's be honest. It doesn't have a cooldown, like if you try and get the power ammo, it, it resets the cooldown on when you can get power ammo. If you're in the rift, you can continuously get healed. Um, it was just a bit silly to me. Like I, I thought, like oh, it doesn't have a cooldown, like a second or two cooldown, where you know it, it does give you that ability of faster regeneration, but it's continuous re re regeneration. Again, we don't know what the armor is going to be like, the weapon's going to be like. Maybe it just moves out in the final game. I just thought it was a bit strong, my opinion. <laughs> Moving on to the golden gun. <coughs> golden gun, obviously, the main complaint is it doesn't last as long. And I don't think it was meant to be a fully, you know, roaming super where you can one-shot anybody from almost any range. Uh, Two-shot if you're um, in a super, which you can run away from them anyway. Uh, the roaming ones, why not? Golden Gun has to be used, again, this is from an outsider point of view, because I haven't played these uh, classes yet, uh, obviously. Uh, Golden Gun, to me, it seems like it needs to be used more objectively. Like, if, if you want to control this power ammo, you pop it just for that not for the kills like although you know i guess you could argue it, its objective is the kill but you got a shorter time frame to, to do it if you're playing the competitive game mode the um to set the charge you know maybe you want to pop your golden gun to make them run away chase them down clear all the people on it with the power you have the, the one shot ability and whatnot give me a give me your feedback on it i feel like it's more of an objective based super now myself um Although it does run out pretty quickly. <laughs> Who knows? You might get some exotic armor that increases the duration. But you might even get that Celestial Nighthawk type of shit. We don't know. Uh, but that, that's just me. Moving on to the Titans. The one I played as. Ah, oh, the Titans are so good. I love the barricade being able to go, Get behind me, Guardian! And do -do 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 -do, going at your glass shield. Glacial, before I forget to mention, please have like a sound or animation of it actually cracking, like that's the best I can do. Just just to make it feel a bit more epic. The the little things count too. So when your shield breaks, it's like a 
like like glass breaking like a you know how Savala's cinematic like his his bubbles going ah ah, ah his just crab kind of like that I, I don't know if that's just me but that, that would feel pretty awesome as a titan we're gonna go with the striker striker's pulse grenade is really strong wouldn't say overpowered since you can get out of it pretty easily um definitely like seeing that being used now uh very strong grenade lightning nade um again very strong but easy to get out of not used as much as the pulse grenade or next coming the flashbang although the cone does seem to uh you know it looks like i'm outside the cone I don't know if that's like ghost placement or whatnot flashbang really good grenade if you can use it right it disorientate, disorientates enemies to leave them without a radar and whatnot very good grenade in my opinion not too damaging but for the you know status effect it gives to enemies it's, it's a pretty good nade uh the super uh, it's a pretty cool super i think the slams are a bit a bit iffy sometimes like sometimes you'd be like oh okay i didn't kill him with a slam go back kill him uh, i do like the shoulder charge how it's like one shot um, I also like the shoulder charge where you can shoulder charge and with a melee combo that's really cool too since you have to get in close with to your enemy but uh, pfft, I've seen players say it's too strong and whatnot I'd like to hear your feedback on it is it annoying when you get shoulder charged and um, killed <laughs> by a uh, striker time uh, overall I, I think the um, the striker's alright it's got like a little uh, aftermath as well so you can hold down an objective I've actually done it quite a few times activate my super when there's like three people left and just instead of killing the dudes let them run away and slam the objective as the bombs going off and then just run on it and die it's just, it's just fucking hilarious so yeah that, that that's a striker like it sentinel is my favorite class to play i mean i only had the option realistically of two classes uh, subclasses uh, sentinel is amazing also want to bring up the the uh, address the melee whiffs melees seem to be very inconsistent bungee please fix the inconsistent melees of melees are being inconsistent um what was on about yeah the sentinel sentinels suppression grenade actually lasts a while i like it i hate when i suppress myself by accident and then not being able to jump over a certain ledge and then die every time but hey whatever uh the force barrier lasts a while too which i like kind of sad it doesn't regenerate but i feel like in the current pace of the game if the force barrier were to regenerate uh, it's like having your own mini healing rift which uh is, is as all right as the titan is uh wouldn't be too fair would it the what else did the magnetic grenade is all right for pve wasn't too used in pvp and what was the other grenade the void wall wasn't used or i didn't see it used in pvp or pve as much apart from players testing out like myself um yeah the sentinel gives you the option to put a ward of dawn down which i really like to see like they, they really gave sentinels like quite a lot to play with you can be a roaming super you can be like a defensive super you only get armor of light but it's still something like <laughs> people don't realize how awesome the water dawn can be in pvp whack it on the bomb when you planted it if they ain't got a super you you won the round pretty much or if you pop a sentinel and hold the l2 abil ability sentinel is really good if you know how to use it guys legit legit you gotta learn how to use the sentinel super for for you to maximize its awesomeness trust me i've legit diffused uh charges just by holding l2 and one or two people are shooting at me like full on bang, 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 bang. i've yet to test out another supers and whatnot I, I doubt it'll block a super but you know we'll see we'll see um yeah the, i think the time to kill could be a bit quicker but then again we need to address team play and how that will affect um the overall pace of the game team play and whatnot um because if you you know if you buff scout rifles and if everyone's using scout rifles in a team, how quickly is it going to melt other people? I think the beta is in a really good place. The only thing that needs a nerf, in my opinion, off the top of my head right now, is the um, fusion rifle nerf the ammo a little bit. It does give you a bit too much. I it's it, the fusion rifle is a really good power weapon to use in PvP. Arguably the best. I love it. But then again, you you got to take into consideration what if there's bigger maps to play and whatnot. Do you know what I mean, guys? Because most of the maps we've played are 
you know, relatively small, tight maps, in my in my opinion. Apart from the control map, where you know you got longer lanes to shoot from, but you can still use the uh, fusion rifle quite effectively. Sidearms. Uh, speaking about weapons, sidearms seem to be the the weakest, or at least the least used. I feel like they could be uh, buffed a little bit somehow. Uh, I don't know if there's going to be any good uh, sidearms, but I test them out myself, and they feel really weak, in my opinion. Unless you need like you know, I don't know. They just they just feel weak to me. Then it was the SMG. SMGs are really weak, medium to long range, as you would imagine, and yet really strong at shotgun range. So. You know, they weren't being used as much, but maybe it's a situational weapon, which uh, I'm kind of cool with. Uh, auto rifles or right pulse rifles were used a lot. Hand cannons were used a lot, and scout rifles weren't used that much. Only the special uh, scout rifle was being used. I didn't see it as many do not com does not compute scout rifles being used. I use this uh, does not compute scout rifle, and I think it's amazing for long range. Uh, you know, th these guns are situational. That's what I like: situational gun and gameplay. It's, it's just awesome. Sorry if this is a bit rambly, but I want to start a discussion. It, it seems like I'm, this is going to be a long video. I do apologize. I'm probably going to write something out for you guys to read as well. Uh, if you want me to write out all my all my um, thoughts, I've got like little notes on my notepad, I'll just expand upon them. If it's a bit too rambly for you, I do I do apologize, but I wanted to give my views as well. Overall, like the beta so far. Okay. Going on to um going on to power ammo. Uh, power ammo seems really good. Uh, apart from in PvE, it could drop a little more in PvE but I don't know if they're going to bring the synthesis back. I, I don't want to always use power ammo for almost every situation. I don't know if that makes sense. It's just I don't want an abundance of power ammo. I want, I want it to be situational again for high burst damage, uh, clutch moments, ad clearers. Do you know what I mean? I don't mind spraying down the boss. But I'd like to use heavy weapons as well because that gives it that fun that fun pinch, do you know what I mean? That That's what I feel the Parama does in PvE. And PvP, it's fine. Um, not really a problem with it. Uh, the spawn seem alright. Uh, again, fusion rifle seems the, uh, the top one to go for. Um, obviously, there's going to be more power weapons, heavy power weapons and whatnot. We'll have to see what happens there. Really happy to hear, or uh, so people have told me this is happening, that there's going to be P separate PvP and separate PvE balancing. Thank you Bungie. That's uh, all and good. That's all and good. Um, uh, the time to kill could be a bit quicker. Yep, already mentioned that. Uh, yep, I've already mentioned that the beta, uh, this is the beta not to be reflected on the full game. So let's not try to go overboard with drastic changes. I feel like the recovery could kick in more. I have actually got an upcoming recovery video where I've went out and actually accurately tested uh, what it's like jumping from 1 recovery to 5 recovery because I'm on the Titan, you don't get that much recovery from the Titan but if the stacks are linear um, and they go up, like say if it's 1 per stack we, we can see how much our max fully stacked recovery build will get you and we can do some math there and, and whatnot we'll just compare the times and see what happens I do not like personally the shield uh not shield the uh radar view um I'd, okay so how, do, how would i explain this you know when you aim out of your gun and then the radar takes a second to come back i don't like that personally i think that's an, a little feature in the uh, game that slows the game down still i mean i kind of get it i've gotten used to it it's not a problem now but i just i just wish like this radar would be there like in Destiny 1. If I just pull away from my gun, I can look at the radar, go back in, ba 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 ba. That's just my personal opinion. I do not think that the radar needs the radar range needs to be increased. I hope they don't increase the range of the radar is fine, just the rate that it comes back after aiming out of your uh gun. That's what I That's what I uh feel about the radar. Uh yeah. Here's another point, connection bars. Bungie, why have you gotten rid of the connection bars but yet I can see my own connection bar? What What are you trying to hide? We want to see players' connections, please. Since, you know, you guys are 
claiming that you're reworking the matchmaking system. We'd like to see like how well you've reworked the matchmaking system. I apologize if that comes off a bit smirky, but why the f the um you know, connection bars. It just doesn't make sense to me. Personally, I would like to see it for myself, especially if I can see my own. Um, the ability to look at people's, you know, gear and all that stuff as I'm flying into the game. I'd like, I'd like that feature. It's, it's not like a, it's not like a do or die for me, personally. But it, it would be a nice feature to, um, to have. I reckon. Uh, also. I talked briefly about blueberries, and let's touch on this topic real quick. I play solo uh, in the competitive mode or playlist, whichever's easier to um, for anybody to understand. Uh, the charge game mode where you got to plant the charge and whatnot. I played a lot of that solo. See how solo friendly the game is, and considering that you do not get a replacement. If somebody leaves, people need to be punished. I, I, I've got so salty to the point that they need to be punished heavily <laughs> for just leaving the game. It completely wrecks the, the feel, the pace, and the enjoyment, the fun of the game. Like, you cannot... I might even make a separate video on this, like, Explorer Impossible punishment systems. You, you, you just can't have people just leaving the game and it's it's bad enough that you go against stacks of four and three fucking like groups do you know what i mean people in groups and then your blueberry leaves i, I already count as like two to three guardians as it is but certain requirements have to be met um you know it's just it's as soon as someone leaves their game the, the way they play the game their tactics completely change the enemy team become way more aggressive because they we, we're outnumbered and you either get pub stomped or you fight good enough just to have a close round every round and win. I've obviously won. I've won against a team of four with just two people. And that was a challenge on its own. But you can make the argument the, the other four people weren't that good. It, it, you know, it's the matter of the fact that the principle that needs to be, you know, consistent. It needs, like, you know, just give them a timeout or something. XP uh, um, punishment, an XP nerf. Like you don't get as much XP, you can't play any activities for ten minutes and whatnot. Since it, since it makes us feel just shit, man. And that that was one of the reasons why I like to play the strike slot. Just chill, because I I could solo the strike. I think is that a bold statement to make? Maybe will I do it in Destiny Two? Maybe. Comment down below if you want me to solo the uh the uh <laughs> strikes and all that stuff and i'll post it to youtube just for you guys to see uh also if you made it to this far in the video thank you for making this far in the video shout out to you dude i know i've been a bit rambly but hopefully you're typing at along as you go um for for you know the beta review and criticize me heavily if you need uh you know just let's get all the points out there put all the cards on the table and continue to uh, make this a better experience, not only for the competitive-minded uh, people, but for you know the casuals and the below-average players as well and whatnot, so everyone can enjoy the game uh, as, as much as they can. <coughs> okay, so let's get on the uh, topic of supercharges. Uh, supers do charge uh, slowly. In PvP, as I said before, PvE doesn't really need to be messed with, but PvP definitely needs to be changed in some way because you only get your super at the end of the game or mid-game. And it's it, supers themselves like, can be taken out rather easily, and that's not a bad thing. Like I like being able to take out a super with time, positioning, uh, correct power ammo, uh, matchups and all that stuff. That's great. Great, but to have your super not come up as quickly and to go against that risk, I feel like if you got your super sooner and then the chance at a second super, that would be kind of cool. Especially the players that don't get a lot of kills, I'm going to be blunt here, that are naturally shit at PvP or whatnot, or whatever their problem may be, it's just not going to be as enjoyable getting stomped on <laughs> at the end of the game with a damn super. Uh, that being said, I have got a little fix for it in my opinion. 
provide super energy for objective play. I don't know why super energy isn't being provided for objective play, but it would sure be nice if I planted the bomb, I just got that extra little bit of kick energy. If I captured the flag, reward me for playing objectively, Bungie. Not, not just by some shitty points, but more, you know, more individual reward. Like, oh, I got some more super. I might go catch another flag. Because, as we mentioned, blueberries are blameless. <laughs> Brainless. Like, they do not want to do shit. <laughs> I find myself... Uh, whenever I'm playing solo, I'm the only one capturing flags. That's how frustrating it is. And I don't get any reward for it apart from one point. You know, like, I'd rather super energy if I'm honest. <laughs> but there's, there's a little something you can play with. Uh, yeah, and hopefully, you know, we had, like, we had, like, you know, 20 guns to play with or something along that lines. Uh, uh, Bunchy, we have a really good opportunity to just give us a load of guns like, like you, you can make some shit guns just 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 for increasing the loot table because i'll be like oh that's a new gun do you know what i'm saying like like with the fixed perk system you have an opportunity to have some really good guns in there that you gotta grind for in certain playlists and activities and like you know amongst all of them they'll be shit but you know the, the good stuff will shine through and people will be you know f trying to uh get that out il saluna from strikes or whatnot, and you know it promotes players to play each activity. If, like if they know there's something good there, and you have such an opportunity to make so many cool armor sets, like with different perks. Like they can be novelty perks. They can be perks that just like look nice. But you know, whenever you get a melee kill, the firework pops off, or like you know, you have a chance of a purple mote of light dropping. You know, so, so, like even some some aesthetic shit like that would be cool. Right, that, that's why I feel like they can do this. Just make a shit ton of loot, and we can just scav scavenge through it. New stuff is good stuff, but not too much of shit shit. Right? Um, yeah, it gives you a great opportunity to um to uh, do that. One of my last two points now, guys, is the super hit detection and melee hit detection needs to be fixed. I have been in positions where I, as a sentinel, have been absolutely hammering the shit out of somebody just for them to not take like any damage and on the third or fourth hit they're like oh i want to die now but killing me or almost killing me in the process fix that and the melee hit detection fix that there's also uh, as you're in a gunfight if you're getting shot the kick the kick just seems weird it like there's been points it almost feels like ghost bullets where i hit somebody and their head bobs backwards a little bit and it, there's no damage on it as I'm getting shot. I don't know what the hell's going on there. Maybe you guys can uh, le lean like a word or two it like on that light on that front, and just help me out there. I do not know what the fuck's going on. And speaking of gunfights, my last point I want to hit home and hit home hard would be the trading within PvP. Come on, Bungie, how have you not fixed this shit yet? I, dude, how can you? Oh man, oh man, how do I express this without being an utter ball bag? Look, people are going to be measuring their skill. How can you accurately measure skill if people are getting free kills when they're not meant to be getting killed, them, those kills? If I melee someone first, and then they melee me, and there's latency, like, come on, this happens in so much in this game. I know it's a beta, maybe you work on it, maybe you won't, but why does it happen in this game so consistently? than any other game out there. I, I just don't understand it. It's, it feels like free kills. I would not mind if the guy out meleeed me and I died for it, then I just know, oh, okay, I'll learn from that. I'll melee sooner and whatnot. It's just trading. I'd like to see way less of it just to promote, you know, like it, it, it's so damaging as well, especially in a team-based game or an objective-based game. If I trade somebody uh, and they take the damage like one second later or something like that, and you know, I could have planted the charge, I could have defused the charge, could have got a team assist kill, like this, that, you know, that just stops you from playing the game, and then you're then you're useless to your team apart from communication, time where they are and all that stuff. And what not. Whew! 
this has been quite the uh, video guys we are now approaching the 40 minute mark just talking about the beta if I have missed anything ladies and gentlemen please let me uh, know if you've made it this far in the video if you've watched it over the over a couple of hours if you if you've watched it over a couple of days I really appreciate you let me know that you've got to the end of the video just say hashtag Josh 57 you suck lols I'm gonna get that type of crap anyway but hey with that said, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening to me. I'll be making a couple more videos uh, that will be uploaded about Destiny 2, the recovery and all that stuff soon. Subscribe, like, hit the bell button for the notifications. And with all that said, thank you for watching, Guardians. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.